uh, with the setup of the live stream. Maybe you need to fire your... No, I'm not going to... We're going to get better together. That's what we're going to do. Um, that's what... I, for goodness sakes, man, I, I can't tell you how many mistakes I have made and had to overcome it. I've never had a, a an insurance claim. I've had insurance, but no claim. It's sort of like having a car insurance and then you don't have an accident. I have had... With hundreds of thousands of miles, I have had a, a tire came off of a trailer one time, hit two trucks. I don't remember that. Uh, so I had a, a renter that was upset and just so happened to lug nuts on the trailer sitting up that I was getting ready to use set up for the night before. So anyway, what I'm saying is in, when it comes to repairs, I don't have any claims. But have I had mistakes? Yes. Um, but I fixed them and I, I'm, I'm really alert to uh, not having a, a water line flood a whole house. I'm just really paranoid about that. So what I wanted to talk to today uh, in lieu of if nobody else has any questions uh, was about doors. And uh, I've had a lot of experience with door jams and doors in varying situations and I would say uh, it's, uh, I've set up industrial doorways you know with a uh, oh, whole let's say uh, garage doors uh, steel frame doors concrete filled jam doors uh, I even worked on doors uh, for an on ecology uh, radiation therapy uh, set up so uh, so what I want to talk to you about and I would assume most of you guys are going to be more interested in, in residential choices my experience with uh, interior doors is the basic a uh, six panel door is more forgiving. When I say six panels, there's six squares, not necessarily all the same size. I think usually the bottom two are bigger, but there's six squares in that. That door is uh, probably close to the cheapest, but it's also probably the most common. And, and it's, uh, whereas a flat Luon door, which is totally flat, very unforgiving. Uh, and I would say because of the paint and because of, uh, you know, it would show every kind of brush mark or roller that you didn't quite get right. And if you have dents, that flat door shows everything. And uh, the same with steel doors. Um, if it's totally flat, somebody runs into it with a cart. That would be in a commercial, usually a commercial uh, application. They hit it and it makes a dent, it's going to show. As a matter of fact, delivering that door can, if you don't set it, put it on the, on the trailer or the truck properly, you can put a dent. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are places that uh, you can go to, I don't know if they, anybody has a chain of them, but you can get doors that are dented, metal doors that they all, by the way, most of these doors are not painted. Uh, there are some plastic coated doors that are painted, but most of the exterior or interior doors are not painted. They are primered. They look white. They might look smooth, but they are primer coated. So, uh, you know, your choices there, when you're starting to think about interior doors, particularly where people are going to bump up against, uh, you think, well, I've got, it, it's white. I'll just leave it like that. Well, the problem with that is that the primer on that door, and it can be the same with the exterior, but we're talking about the interior right now. As you reach for that door, a little bit of oil on your hands gets onto that primer and it stays there. Can you paint over? Of course you can. But what I'm saying is that door won't be as pretty, nor as long-lasting 
in in a good looking fashion because it's not meant to be it's meant to be painted whatever color you want it and you're like oh man that's asshole it is uh secondly your regular six panel doors have cardboard crisscross uh, squares or diamonds if you will in the middle of it so they don't take a lot of weight so you can uh, put things up against it you can hang things on it you can put screws into it and you might actually be causing some grief uh, now the difference between a hollow core door which is that what you know I was talking about the cardboard inside for keeping its shape and a solid core door is weight and the hinges the hinges will you know on a solid core door generally will you're going to want to put a ball bearing hinge instead of relying on the on the the brass or the metal hinges to rub on each other because it'll the top hinges will start failing the length of screws may be too uh on a metal jam which is a commercial application you're not gonna worry so much about length of screws because it's going solid screws into a solid jam not into wood hoping to get to the wood below beyond it so on the interior doors when you're uh putting them in you want to make sure that you're getting the same size of course but not only that uh what kind of trim if it has trim you can choose to not have trim you can choose to not have the front the jam that is if you already have uh, a door that you want to get replaced because somebody kicked it down and busted it or it got damaged some other kind of way or maybe you just want to upgrade your doors but you don't want to change your jams well, you can do that. You just need to be conscious of the fact that sometimes those doors may have already been cut down. Or they may be a different size than what you're aware of. So, I mean, I know it sounds odd. 30, 32, you know, two O's, two foot, um, you know. Now, when it comes to uh, interior doors and exterior doors on houses conventional homes uh, when you're trying to figure out if you have a right hand swing or a left hand swing you put your back to the hinge where the hinges are and then a right hand would be to your right and a left hand would be to your left on a conventional home that's the case that's how you tell if you need a right hand or a left hand door you put your back to the hinge side and if it swings left, it's left hand. If it swings right, it's right hand. Same with your exterior. Except for mobile homes. Now, on exterior, the interior is just the same. All your interior doors are, put your back to the hinge. If it swings to the right, it's a right. If it swings to the left, it's a left. Okay? But the exterior is different. So when you go to order from a mobile home supplier, he's going to ask you on the phone, he's going to say, is the hinge on the right when you're outside or is the hinge on the left? So make whenever you order your exterior door for a mobile home, made specifically for a mobile home, you want to make sure that they understand which one. Hey, man, when I'm on the outside, the hinges on the right and I believe that's the same way with campers it's not the same as conventional homes and I wish they would just stop doing that stuff because it's it's still a left hand or a right hand door your back goes to the hinge but for whatever reason the exterior doors on mobile homes and probably campers you're gonna have to know which side the hinges on when you're outside okay so furthermore on the interior doors there's a lot of there's a lot of choices um, and and you can get into glass when you start doing uh, 16 pane 16 holes of glass 
be conscious of the fact that you have to paint that. Okay, uh, you can spend a lot of time trying to get that right. And you can certainly get it wrong. We, there's nothing worse than having to sand. Now, uh, should you primer before? Yeah, you probably should if it doesn't already have primer. You know, primer, uh, particularly if you're going to paint a door that already has paint on it, you know, you're going to have to put a primer on it to get it to adhere properly and to get it to cover properly. But your, your doors on the inside, alignment is everything. So uh, I probably will do some videos for you guys uh, on how to adjust the door and how to tell which side needs to be adjusted. So let me try to do some of it verbally. Well, quite often somebody will say, hey, the door's hitting at the top. They've actually called me and said, hey, what do I, what do, I do? The door is hitting at the top of the jam when it swings. You know, may not even be able to know what a jam is. So, uh, so I ask the question, okay, on the doorknob side, is it hitting at the top? And they go, yeah, it's okay. Look across the door to the hinge and then go to that doorknob side and push on it with its, sim not right close, but close to close. See if that hinge moves at the top. And quite often they'll say, yeah, it is moving a little bit. It's like, okay, now open up your door and tighten down those screws if any one of those screws doesn't ever tighten all the way up you're gonna to have to put a, a longer screw in or here's a new trick and this was taught to me for, by an old timer uh, not using a longer screw usually does it but what you can do is you can put uh, well he was using toothpicks but you can literally carve a piece of wood a shaving slide it in that hole and then run that screw in and guess what it'll catch i've done it on concrete for shutters on that that get uh where they won't the screw won't hold anymore so consider that now what if it's not most of the time a house when somebody calls me they've been living in the house it's not something that's brand new and they just moved in and there's a problem if that's the case then I would say somebody installed the door improperly, maybe. Most of the time, though, that hint, that top hinge and maybe the second hinge is loose. And then you hit across on the bottom, on the top of the, over here. So the door leans like so, okay? What is another alternative to that top side hitting? The whole jam starts pulling out of the trim. There's trim on both sides of that door, and that jam would start pulling out. So it would be thicker up here and thinner down here where the trim was all up near the same area as it was down at the bottom on both sides. And that jam started pulling over. How in the world would that happen? That generally happens when somebody cut the top of the jam so that they could adjust it. And that's usually not new. That's usually an older home. Um, sometimes it's somebody trying to patch a jam in because the somebody, uh, well, a door has been there for a long time can just wear out the jam side. Usually because of abuse, because I've seen jams that were over a hundred years old and they're doing just fine. So what I'm what I'm saying is, most of the time when that door is hitting on the top side of the doorknob side. Is because your hinge and your middle hinge top hinge and middle hinge is loose and it can be that the pin is coming out you know I've been into hospitals and have nothing to do and point out hey did you know your hinge is about to come out of that big old heavy door because those are heavy doors and they're like oh really they kind of amuse the fact that I'm looking at door hinge pins well there's not much to you know quite often you're sitting there very bored um so and those doors are heavy yes and they're usually ball bearing so what i'm trying to help you with is if your doorknob's not catching anymore but it's rubbing at the top 
you know the strike plate's not catching this the you know it's not catching anymore check and see if the top two hinges are loose make sure the pins are driven all the way down and then I gave you suggestions if they are what to do um, it's rare that the bottom side hits okay that's that usually means that that how that door has been reinstalled and somebody said it wrong okay I just recently had somebody ask me to come to their commercial uh, site and there had been two doors that were installed improperly installed that way uh, and they'd already cut the hinges down to get it recessed get a little bit more it wasn't even close it's quarter inch off um, there's nothing wrong with not knowing it's just they didn't do it but uh, I end up not doing that job because they end up trading some product in in the store for somebody to do it so you know whether or not that ha actually happens I'm more power to you because uh, that's probably the best way to get things done is to trade for something you have for something that they need but it's not ideal because maybe they don't have maybe they need the money to feed their family maybe not maybe they you know like me I've traded for vehicles and so on and so on uh, lawn mowers uh, so what I'm going to lead up to next is when you start getting to those 16 glass uh, doors or other glass doors on the inside, quite often the jam might need some support. One of the problems that happens is if you pull that jam over and it pulls it too much, Say when you're just oh I'm hitting at the top you pull that jam over and there's no there should be there should be shims behind there to keep it in one place but believe me it happens that people just in a hurry don't do it so if you pull too hard it'll pull it beyond the tr inside the trim on both sides and now the bottom side is hitting so you'll have to back out the screws and maybe even open up the trim to pry it back out put some shims in there so you hit the right place so you're you're going to mess with it a while until you get it right so, uh, then it comes to strike plate and the adjustment of the doorknob to the strike plate uh, the depth on that on that strike plate you on the interior you don't want it to be too tight because you're not up against a gasket like you are on an exterior door. It has a rubber or a felt gasket, and you want it to be tight so wind, cold wind doesn't blow in, or, or even, for that matter, warm air, but particularly cold air. Um, so you're, you're wanting it to, to be snug, but you don't want it to be where you have to push it. So you want to be able to go through there and click, you know, now. When you're installing your new knob or your first time to install a doorknob on that door or that jam, that jam's newly installed, when you're setting that, that door, this being your door, you want, th this is always going to be set by your hinges, but you want this running across the top the same width all the way across. Okay, you want this side down here the same width all the way across. Now, if this side, if you set your hinge side level or plumb, whichever one, you if you got this right, everything else is going to be square. There are exceptions to that. That's on exterior doors. We're going to talk about interior doors. So whenever you got that jam right, it's the same distance across the top as it is down here. It's the same distance. It's the same distance all the way across the top. You'll do the same on the side, a strike side, same gap all the way up top to bottom. That way your latch will catch on your strike plate. Okay. Then you're going to adjust your, your uh, strike plate 
to, to meet where that uh, latch catches into it. And if you want to, you can, before you put your strike plate on, and when you got your doorknob and your everything put together, you swing over there and you take a pencil and mark top and bottom of it, and then you put your strike plate so that it can go in there. And be that slot and it will be in, inside your mark or cover your marks and it will have room so even if the door settles a little bit it's still it's still catching not that you want your door to settle so ideally when you're setting that door you want this side level you want the same gap all the way across the top and you want the same gap all the way down here now when it comes to mobile homes if you have central heat and air, it does not have return air in every room. Okay. Very, very few exceptions. Uh, maybe a modular home might have return air like a house, but that's what I'm not talking about modular. I'm talking about a mobile home. It, it has return air that comes through either a vent, which is rare, in the door or a vent up up high smaller vent it happened it, there are some out there probably less than five percent of them maybe seven or eight and i doubt ten percent of them out there have those vents so what they do to get return air is the gap underneath that door so you need a two inch gap underneath that door so that you can have maybe an inch and a half gap so you can have return air come back if you don't, the air, the air is going to come up through that vent, and, it, and once it builds up a like a balloon that's a hard balloon, it's not going to be able to push any more in. Okay, so on a mobile home, unless it has vents at the top of the door, you're going to have to put a gap at the bottom of the door on all your interior doors, or you're not going to have return air. I have a question. Uh, says Ledger Content. I'm currently trying to replace a plastic bathtub in a mobile home. Anything I should know before starting? Plastic bathtub in a mobile home. Now's the time to determine whether or not you want to keep that short bathtub. And the uh, reason I say that is because that bathtub is not 60 inches long like a conventional home okay it is 56 it is four inches shorter okay so uh when you're going if you're going to order one to fit that hole you're going to have to realize that it's meant to be shorter okay you're not going to be able to buy a regular bathtub from a conventional mobile from a to a conventional home and put it in a mobile home without moving that wall. Can you move the wall? Yes, you can. You can move that wall just enough area. Uh, I don't know what's on the other side of your, uh, or either end of that mobile home, but you can jog that back and then get your, your full size uh, tub in. And most people want it. Most people want a longer tub so they can lay down in. And by the way, the mobile home tubs are generally very shallow. Now, why is that? Okay, they're trying to get a home that is as least a burden on you financially as they can. So, does it function? Yes, it does. Okay, so when you're ordering your tub, and this goes with uh, whether you're in a mobile home or a conventional home when you walk into your and look at that tub you have is the jump the drain on the right hand side or is the drain on the left hand side that is going to mean what how you order that that tub the odd thing about mobile homes is about 10 percent of them maybe 15 or 20 have a drain in the center off to one side you're going to have to determine that. I'm sure you see it, but that's how you order it. Miss Diane Wood has tuned in, and wow. I told her hi. And what a good friend. Maria28 says, thank you for your channel. I'm learning a lot from you. Well, I'm happy to share. 
I really am. I, there come a day I won't be able to do, uh, for some reason, won't be able to do any work. Why would it all, I, all, all that I've learned, not that I can share you every, with everything I've learned, but why would it all just disappear because I don't want to share it with nobody? It makes no sense. So why not? Why don't we all help one another? How much better of a place would it be, this world that we live in, if we shared with each other? I mean, it'd just be a better place. Why can't we be encouraging and helping one another instead of finding ways to not like each other or not share what we know? Like, I've got this secret. I don't want to tell anybody else. The fact of the matter is, um, you know, we're all going to have to figure out ways to do things for ourselves or at least know how to do it so you know that the person's doing work for you is doing it right. And, and be conscious of the fact that perhaps that guy that's they're doing it for you it may be in a, over his head he may have been uh, i was just talking about doorknobs he may know doorknobs not know the first thing about bathtubs and that, you're like oh, I'm, I'm gonna try to say yeah i saw a, a video too yeah i know how to do bathtubs well you know he might make a mistake and you need to work with him uh because if he's the guy that you feel comfortable with He's probably going to take care of you. If you don't feel comfortable with him, he shouldn't be there, period. I know you're desperate to get the work done. Um, he shouldn't be there, period. Now, I'm not meaning to be uh, saying that only men do it, but there's not many women that do. Uh, matter of fact, I'm trying to think. I've only known... Uh, not professional women. I've only known two people that actually did repair work but they didn't do it for a living uh and and that was in a uh an area that i did work for, for quite a while that uh not probably an hour and a half two hours from here they're not no they're not they're feminist oh no men can be there they're learning <laughs> yeah so um no man can live there so there was some very talented uh, women there. Uh, one lady, I, I was really impressed with her work. Fantastic work. Um, and then she was a good person in a lot of ways. Uh, the other, really wanting and to learn how to do more. And the fact that I would talk to her, she felt like uh, she was almost stealing from me. And I was happy to share with her uh, everything that I could without actually hurting the customer, the, the one of the other ladies that I was working for. And she, uh, I think she probably ended up uh, taking over the work maybe uh, because they haven't called me in a couple of years to go out there and do work. Um, interesting enough though, when you're trying to do these things like the bathtub, um, Every circumstance is a little different. So measure, the, 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 the old saying is measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to tell you, in addition to when you order that tub, if you keep it the same size and don't move the wall, which I would expect you wouldn't, you can order an aftermarket tub from Lowe's or Home Depot or anywhere else, but they need to know the length of that is 56 or 54 I can't remember I think it's 56 it's four inches shorter I think and then whenever you do your tub surround it's going to have to have the ability to be the back sides to be able to be adjusted to fit the so generally you'd want the corners separate from the materials on the edges so like a tub surround that Home Depot sells that's pre-molded and got all these shells built in is probably not going to work okay because it's made for a 60 inch conventional home tub surround all right um and then on on that mobile home tub uh you want to be careful with well it's not that big a deal but there's a special trap at the bottom of most mobile home tubs when it's connected to the bottom do you want to use it 
if you're going to try to get a mobile home exact same rep replica of the one you have it, it's kind of hard to mess around because you can you can get it at lowe's it has a mobile home farm you can order it online but it is a very specific trap in that it connects directly to the bottom of the tub itself and quite often it's up against something else and you can try to you could end up going back you know four or five pieces back trying to get that another one in so you might want to try to save that if you're going to put the exact same tub in if you're going to put an, an aftermarket one that has an overflow on it like a conventional home you're not going to use that trap you're going to use another kind of trap and that's where you can get into a true journey is putting that trap underneath the mobile home uh well, for that matter you can get into it with a conventional home too so uh when you crawl underneath that home uh, to connect everything up you're going to have to allow a certain amount of room to reach up there and, and put it put it to the bottom of the of the tub drain if it's the a conventional type where it has the overflow and everything it goes goes down beyond the bottom and it comes out and the drain goes over to it so it's l-shaped and then it drops more down like a t so um personally when it comes to working on mobile homes I tend to lean toward making it more like a conventional home because that's what most people want. They would like their house to be a little bit more like a conventional home, not because they're trying to copy, but because they're comfortable with it. They see it everywhere. Um, you know, it's usually well, we're talking about a wider, deeper tub. Can second traps in the, that trap. Is Maria 28 was asking if she had a tenant that said a funny smell was coming from this bathtub can stuff get trapped in that trap okay usually when a funny smell is coming from the bathtub it means they're not using it okay that trap that trap ends up being dried out and then this with the purpose of that trap is to keep the sewer smell from going through and up into the bathtub. So if that if over a period of time that trap is not used, or that bathtub is not used and no water gets in the trap, that's what stops the sewer smell from going through. So probably it's a bathroom they're not using, or a bathtub they're not using, and that trap is dried out, and now sewer smell comes up. And that's not unusual because like uh, there was a brand, there's a brand new Walmart neighborhood market in Pea Ridge and uh, the first month I, I finally went in there which I, I try to stay away from Walmart I don't I don't like Walmart because they don't treat their employees very well as a history so yes people like Walmart like working for Walmart but I just personally don't uh, for a number of reasons but anyway I went into Walmart probably a month or so after it got started this first time I'd been in and uh, there was a strong sewer smell. People were making note of it as I was walking in. So I went through the store, got what I wanted. I knew that smell. So I got to the register. I said, uh, is there a way for you to get a hold of the manager? She's thinking I'm mad at her for something she did. I said, no, you checked me out fine. I just, I'm not complaining. I just wanted to talk to the manager for a minute. So here comes the manager. I know I'm kind of probably putting him out in a position. Oh my God, it was first month we're here and this guy's got a problem. Uh, and I said, Hey, I know you may have gotten used to the smell, but when I walked in here, there's a sewer smell. He says, yeah, but I got a lot of people complaining about it. I'm sorry about that. Sir. He thought that's what I was complaining. I said, no, I want to help you with something in the floor. There are places where you sweep up in the back or in a wet area in the butcher area. There are traps in the floor, in the concrete. And if you don't put water in them occasionally, that water will dry up and then the sewer smell smell will come up through. Now, I'm not asking you to go over there and put your nose to every vent and figure out which one don't have water. What I'm suggesting to you is take a pitcher of water and pour it into the floor drain and that smell will disappear. Guess what? They don't have no problem with that. They probably put it as a routine and maybe they're telling every manager now, hey, make sure some people do that. It happened the same thing 
at a, a, a convenience store called Come and Go. Went into the store. It's woo, burn your eyes kind of smell. It's not a stinky smell, but it's straight up gas smell that I'm smelling in both these situations. And so I told the, I said, hey, could I talk to the manager? Because, you know, people underneath are like under pressure to take care of all the people. So I talked to the manager. Here comes the manager upset. Oh, my goodness. If somebody's done wrong, I had to fix it. And I'll say, hey, man, I want to tell you something. There's a floor drain back there that you probably haven't, you know. So here's what I'm telling you. Your renter probably isn't using that bathroom. And it might not be the tub. If it is the tub, for sure, the smell's coming from, pour water in there and that, that that's the only way you're getting any smell. Is there stinky stuff in there? Every time you take that trap out and dump it out, I promise you there's some more, the most unique smells you're ever going to smell. And every one of them's a little bit different. Uh, I'll tell you something else about um, traps. Uh, and also, this is a problem for uh, disposals. It is a killer for both of them. And that is the gravel inside of an aquarium. So everybody thinks, well, I'm going to, this fish died. I'm just going to dump all the, the water and, and then some gravel falls out and it goes down in there. That are, that's a killer for uh, disposal. Cause it just stays in there and, and hangs up everything but most importantly the trap gets full of that gravel and now stuff don't it gets hung up in there and it, it that you know you're making what would have been like an inch and a quarter room to go through that trap it's now full of gravel and it literally will will stop up you know like, so you go in there and you take the trap out and you dump out and I'm like whoo the stink and it's a bunch of gravel so when you get ready to tell your kids that the fish ran away, whatever you do, don't dump the gravel into the sink. Take the gravel and put it into the out yard or something. And then the fish ran away down the drain or down the toilet. Don't pour the gravel down the toilet either because it's got a trap built into it. Yeah, don't do that. It's rough. Okay. The, so that's what your renter's problem is. Um, and you guys can break in at any point, and I'll, I'll be happy to work with you about whatever it is that you want to pick my brain about. Uh, and I feel privileged to be able to anybody want to talk to me uh, because I get to share what I've learned. Um, so when it comes to doors in mobile homes and in some houses... I've seen quite a few older houses where the, instead of leveling up the house properly, they just level the floors out. So toward the back where the house is settled on the high side, they, they level out the floor. And guess what? Your ceilings end up being shorter. Your doors end up being shorter. So anyway, you end up having to put in a uh, door that's been cut off quite a bit. And when we're talking about mobile homes, when you cut that door off, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm cutting off the bottom inch and a quarter or maybe even an inch sometimes of just solid wood that they've laminated together in your... <laughs> She's like, if I tell my renter that, she will not believe me. Tell okay. her to try it. How about this? Close the door, run some water into the sink and the bathtub, and then say, hey, let's see what that did. If you want to, you can take some... Uh, magical whatever you want to say a liquid of some kind i'm going to try this if you don't mind and we'll see if we can't fix this i talked to a guy and he told me that this was a trick that he used all you're going to do is run the bathtub or the sink both and that way you'll have you'll fix it i mean is it's she probably has another bathroom and she's not using that one and really don't want to use it because it smells real bad in there so um so when you when you cut that bottom part off of the door, it's really not a big deal. Uh, one of the things that, that you learn is the bottom of the door and the top of the door. Nobody ever notices if you paint it. Okay? They do on the inside of the jam, but the top of the door they don't notice. Okay? So uh, you can paint it that way. You feel good. 
if you want to hey i know i'm laying there in bed i know the top of my door jam and the bottom my top of my door and the bottom of my door is painted Ta-da! you don't have to because nobody's ever going to know it notice it um on <clears throat> where a closet door and uh entry door is close where they might connect if you're remodeling a room and you want to put a closet in or something i have seen it where those doors end up connecting the doorknobs and uh, i've seen it where people can't get out of uh, the room without like oh my god I'm, I'm locked in here okay i just ran into a situation she's like what do i do and like well you can you can put a, a door stop on the hinge itself they have these where you take the hinge pin out and you put this in and it has an adjustment so that the door will only open so far there's an alternative um but maybe just planning to the door for the closet to be a little bit further over would be a better deal um when it comes to uh exterior doors way more important way more important to get everything like i was showing you before level here uh, as a rule unless it's a lot of uh a lot of room like an inch and a half of room which does happen occasionally when you take out the old door uh the total width you know then you might want to add something on this side but i like the hinge side myself to be solid up against what's there if it's even even close to level or plumb so on the hinge side i want it screwed up solid then i adjust the top and the sides with shimming until i get it where i want that way i can put a screw into it and a lot of times what i'll do is i'll take that that gasket that's on the exterior door open it up and put the screw in there so that when i let go of that gasket it covers up the screw you can also put the screw or, or you know I, as a rule i don't like using nails on on things like i use nails on trim um there's a lot of guys that are hardcore into nailing things and i i just like the idea of a screw being able to uh take it back out it's like oops i made a mistake um so i use screws a lot and i, and I can adjust that now you're also uh, needing to be careful with the uh, alignment because the door can be twisted okay you can be square all the way across here but what happens if this jam is leaning this way okay if the door is swinging in there it's going to hit the top up here where you leaned out Okay, so you, that's one of the things you're going to have to pay attention to. Is the, the same. It, it can happen on the interior door, but not very often. By the way, when it comes to mobile homes on the interior doors, generally those walls are not two by four walls. They're two by twos. Uh, so, or two and a half. So you're going to end up cutting the jam down not on the hinge side not not on the side where the hinges are sticking out into the room on the other side and that can seem daunting but you can definitely use a house type door on a mobile home consider this though the majority of those mobile homes on the interior they're using paneling for the jam and a little bit of trim for you to hit against but it's paneling so whenever you get ready to put in a, a house type door and jam, you're probably going to have to move over one side of that framing. Whereas in a house, you won't have to do that. When you do, you know, you have to be the same distance on, from side to side all the way around. In addition to the same distance here when you, you set that door. Um, on an exterior door, uh, you have a lot of choices you don't have to use brick mold that they give you and and i'll tell you this brick mold if a guy wanted to he could make a business or a gal 
want to make a business just going around to the rich neighborhood and the brick mold that literally has brick up against it is rotted and you can see every joint and they call it finger joining pieces of wood all the way around that fancy door and it's starting to come apart it might have been even painted and it's still coming apart and I believe the the wood that they're using on the on those uh, on that brick mold around and sometimes a jam is made that way of all things uh, it's made out of poplar which is uh, it absorbs a lot of water so I can't tell you how many times I have replaced that brick mold that they sell you the door jam with and put in plastic or PVC brick mold to replace it. It cuts the exact same way as regular wood uh, and it ends up being really pretty and smooth whereas wood might have wood grain in it. Um, and you can buy the brick mold in wood uh, and it will last a lot longer than the finger jointed stuff but you'll still have some rot whereas PVC you will not have any rot. There won't ever be a problem with it burning not that the exterior of your house that usually catches on fire if it's brick but you may have brick mold on your conventional home if you're replacing that door jam generally they put brick mold on that expect to have if you don't keep it painted very regularly expect to replace it and ex probably your best choice would be to get that PVC brick mold and make your own and that would be it the second problem that happens with exterior doors is it rots out at the bottom of that door. When, when you install that door, they literally tell you, hey, you need to put a bead of silicone here and here, but you got to read the instructions. Uh, and you need to maintain it. There is absolutely nothing out there that doesn't have maintenance. I'm telling you relationships have maintenance everything has maintenance okay you can neglect it a long long time maybe and not pay the price but i promise you you should have maintained it um doors are that way again if it starts dragging on that top side you're going to look at your screws on the on the hinge the top two hinges on the exterior door can you put a house type door into a mobile home yes you can now you have a choice do i cut that door down with wise if i have to sometimes you don't maybe a, a mobile home has actually three and a half inch wall or a two by six wall sometimes you don't have to cut it down but if you have that choice where that wall is only two inches two and a half inches wide do you have to cut it down no you do not you can literally make a a little bit of a so like add another two inches to this inside but say it sticks out about an inch and a half you can add a two by four on each side put some wood on it to bring it out even and then put some fluted trim and and make a real nice um, what is that the the little squares at the top and make it look elaborately nice or you can just build it out of drywall uh, you can dress up that entry so it doesn't have to it, or you can just deal with the fact that it's sticking inside it's not a big deal and it's way better than the paper laminated paper jam that you usually get with a storm door and a uh, regular entry door okay way better that's me saying that you can put a regular steel clad or any other kind of exterior door the exception would be uh the big round top glass at the top of a mobile home You're generally not going to be able to do that there has been times when i was able to because they had a uh they had taken out the ceiling uh not sure in they one i did they had a a dormer going across right over the front door and so they had room to put this in I was like do you have that room on the inside they said oh better look looked inside yeah we got a little bit of room I was like oh I'm talking about a little bit <laughs> so what we end up having to do is make room for it to anyway it's not a good idea 
to put that big rounded uh, glass. But let me tell you something. You can put that $1,500, $2,000, door with side lights into a mobile home. You sure can. And you can put a full-size uh, sliding glass door or French doors into a mobile home. Okay, for exterior doors like French doors, we have a double door, double swing. We're getting into where you have to be very, very sure that both sides measure across, all the way across the top and down. Both sides have to be level and, and square across the top. Otherwise, one side will be hitting on the other and it, there'll be a gap all the way. It's going to be a journey. But you can do it. Okay, that's why I like screws. Hey, I can back it out, add a shim, take out a shim, put a screw back together. Yeah, that works. Okay. So those double doors can be done. Uh, believe me, that you can. there is an art form to installing double doors. I'm not talking about one where one is a fake door. I'm talking about where both work. Uh, when it comes to those double doors to an ex, ex outside, uh, you have a higher risk and, or an easier risk for somebody to break in. I don't mean to be alarming. Also, when it comes to exterior doors, if you have glass and you think somebody might possibly in this show up and break in, what you can do is put a, a double keyed deadbolt. That is to have a key on both sides. So even though they break the glass, they can't reach in there and turn the deadbolt and then get in. Okay, so you have a keyed. Now they're going to have to kick the door down. If you've had somebody break in or you had to break into your own house and they, you kick it in, you break the jam. Let's say you didn't break the door, you broke the jam out, which is where the deadbolt goes in, you broke it out. They literally make a big steel replacement for that. Okay, so you can put that over that area and go on for a while longer. Um, uh, it's really, really wild. Uh, I've seen some really badly damaged where somebody broke into their own home and, 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 and fixed it. Because they were like, I gotta get in. I got I got my friend over. He threw his shoulder into it and, and broke it down. Okay, so there's a lot of things you can do to make that that exterior door uh, a little bit more secure. What would that be? Well, they give you these little short screws quite often for the the deadbolt latch where it goes into the jam. Take those little short screws out, put long ones in so it goes into the two by so that whenever they get ready to kick, it's not breaking just the jam because the screws are into the jam. It's going in, the screws are going into the two by beyond it and they're literally having to kick and try to break the screws that are on into that two by. So you put longer screws and the same with your, ex, your hinge screws. Uh, I generally make sure they're long screws and usually they leave one screw out for every hinge to put the long screws that they provide but if they didn't you still want to use longer screws and if it gets to be a regular thing for that top because you're going in and out of that uh, door all the time and it's always loose enough guess what start putting the top hinge replace take out the short screw put a long one in that way it goes all the way over it holds a little bit longer and a lot longer actually and it holds better. So those longer screws on the deadbolt, and if you think on the strike plate, but if you have a deadbolt, you generally don't have to worry about the strike plate on the, you know, at the bottom. When you're adjusting those doors, I generally make it where you have to push up against the gasket to turn the deadbolt. Now why? Because you're trying to not have the, somebody think they have the ability to stick a screwdriver in there and pry it. If they get a little bit of gap, they think they can do it. Okay, they stick a pry bar in there. Mm -mm. So make it hard on them. And, and when you 
push it up and and tighten that deadbolt it kind of goes snap okay when the wind blows by it doesn't blow your door and doesn't let any air in it's pushed up against that gasket so i generally want it to do that now just to close it may not be as tight to put the deadbolt i usually make it where you have to turn it push it a little bit to turn it in okay um so when it comes to storm door in front of your exterior outside door entry door if you want to call it okay you have no windows let's say or if you do but listen if that storm door is facing where the sun comes in in the afternoon i have seen it bake the paint off that interior door turn it black because there's so much heat trapped inside that storm door and that exterior door just gets cooked i've seen it wear blisters off the plastic on that steel clad door so maybe you might want to figure out a way to put an awning over that door just get some of that afternoon sun from hitting it because it's usually not the sun that's coming straight in it's that sun coming in some from like three o'clock four o'clock it goes through that glass, that heat stays trapped in that space, and it just cooks the paint. It's hot to the touch, too, by the way. You reach in there and like, oh, that's hot. So consider that whenever you're, say, you're on the west side. Morning sun is not. She was saying, Maria 28 is saying, tenants are constantly damaging the storm doors and everything else. Um, They don't have the money invested that you do even with their deposit as a matter of fact the more they put in for a deposit the more they think you should fix everything okay um and and that that has to do with uh the people i, I you know i probably should talk about how to uh my experiences with renters but that'll be another, I could talk a long, long time on that. So, uh, renters, I don't, I would personally say when it comes to renting, I probably would get rid of storm doors. Because uh, moving because furniture in. Doors. Or, the alternative was, whenever you get ready to replace that storm door, slash entry door go to a bigger door the problem generally is that's a 32 inch door not a 36 they're again they're trying to stay inside that budget so you can afford to buy that home so just go ahead and do a 36 you may have to move a couple of switches or something that's your worst case scenario but put a 36 in so they can get their furniture in maybe not tearing up that storm door or Get rid of the storm doors. Most people are not letting the screen let fresh air in. Most people are running their air conditioner. So get rid of the storm door. Maybe that's the issue. Um, it's almost that way with me. I tell you, I've gotten to the point where I just don't think that storm doors are the answer. Now, I generally put a cover or a porch over all the entries. So I don't have to protect that door, which is what a storm door would lend itself to do. It's meant to, hey, I can leave my entry door open. Okay. And so I can raise up the, you know, the screen, you know, or maybe just an old, old style sc uh, screen door. But generally the storm doors have that adjustable so they like let fresh air in that just doesn't there's not many people doing that everybody gets spoiled and using the air conditioning uh, so i tend to not when i replace that door i go ahead and put a house type door in and make sure it's 36. even then they'll tear them up if it can be done it will be done that's another time i'll talk to you guys about that um so check around when it comes to prices uh 
you, you might consider if you're on a budget to go into uh, Habitat for Humanity. They have uh, stores that people donate doors to them. They want to get wealthy people want to donate those things. Uh, and contractors want to get a tax write off. They'll donate products. That, hey, these are left over. They didn't. The customer didn't. Whatever the reason, they get all these things donated to them. And you can get some really good deals on doors. Okay. Floor, really. Ceiling fans, light fixtures. Yeah. Flooring, paint, uh, bathtubs, whirlpool bathtubs. Uh, I'm making it a point to have most of my rentals, which are mobile homes, almost all of them have whirlpool tubs in them now because Habitat for Humanity or you know, somewhere a, a Craigslist or Facebook marketplace, somebody's like, oh, I'm getting rid of it. Um, or they're going to a fancier one, generally. So what you might consider is uh, looking to replace that door with one from Habitat for Humanity or some other kind of uh, discount place. And you can shop around and get the best. It's... Generally, what your contractor can do is adjust to your budget if he's got a good conscience. <laughs> I cannot tell you. I don't. Angie's list might be a way to tell, but, um, you know, I, I don't know how to tell you. Just go with your instincts when it comes to somebody that's working for you. All right, guys. Uh, been talking for a while. Is there anybody, if anybody has any more questions, we're going to try to do this on every, uh, Saturday. every Saturday. We're going to try. We are getting better with the uh, live stream uh, programming and equipment and all that stuff. Uh, Where are you guys in Arkansas? We're in northwest Arkansas. Northwest corner. So we're, you know, our house is like, five miles from the Missouri border and probably 40 miles from the Oklahoma border. So we're, I can go, I can get to Kansas and Oklahoma and Missouri in about an hour or less or less. Yeah. Missouri, I can get within five, 10 minutes depending on where I go. Uh, but I travel pretty far. I just matter of fact, I got a call that gentleman. Uh, I just talked to a guy. He wanted me to go all the way to California, and uh, I got to call him. It's like I, I'm not going to be able to go because my wife doesn't want me to be gone for ten, twelve days at a time. We have a great relationship, she and I, and I'm very proud of her for putting up with me. Maria says she's got a cousin in Searcy. Searcy? Yeah, Searcy. Yeah, that's a little. That's, that's a little, a, little ways two away. Two and a half hours. I was gonna say because I found chickens in Searcy and I can't go get them. So yeah, two and, two and a half hours. <laughs> that's a little further toward the center of the state. Uh, not dead on in the center. Center would probably be closer to Conway, Little Rock area. Right. You know. Little Rock's a little further from Conway. Cersei's up above Conway and probably two hour, two and a half hours away. Um, I don't really cover that area. I've, I've had people want me to go work on their... I've traveled for two hours. Two and a half hours I've traveled to. I've, I've went all the way up to into Missouri, but that's generally because my heart tells me to my pocketbook i end up losing money the my boy who's working for me and anybody else who's working for me when i travel two and a half hours and i pay them drive time five hours that's five hours of them what i call windshield time they didn't do anything usually they're sleeping so i, I literally in if if i go that far it's because i want to lose money to help this person uh, when i say lose money I can literally make more, less money myself personally than they make. Oh, way less. Yeah. So uh, two and a half hours away is too far. 
Yeah, and I'm on a two-hour limit. I'm not allowed to go buy chickens any further than two hours. I don't want her to be too far away to go rescue. Uh, you know, the exceptions to that would be I have driven about two and a half hours away to re-level a home. So we're talking about five hours of driving and uh, two or three hours to, to level out the home and talk to them about things. Um, so, you know, I can, I can kind of justify that because I'm only gone out, uh, I've got three hours on the job, ends up totaling enough. Um, so I have to make a lot more money to make it justifiable or I just, I want to help that person. Ideally, I would, I would, you know, this is my ideal guys. And I'm not saying that it's going to happen. My ideal would be that I had enough money that I could do work for somebody I thought needed to work and couldn't afford to pay for it. The end goal for this channel. Yeah, if this channel was to make enough money, which, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it would. If it, if it made enough money that I could do that, I would, I would donate my time and the in the channel would maybe pay for the materials or something uh, so that I could help an elderly person or somebody infirmed but you know that's a good way to that's that's the way I would dream I don't necessarily think that, that my dreams will come to fruition but uh, many times I have uh, traded for things I didn't need cars that didn't run a backhoe now, what is that thing that's sitting over there? It's 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 a Harbor Freight backhoe that you would hook behind your truck, but it won't roll, roll down the road. You have to put it on trailer and then put it, take it off trailer and drag it behind your truck. It has a nine horse motor. And I didn't need it, uh, but anyway, I've got riding mowers that don't work. I probably have 15 of those. Somebody, I can tell they're struggling to get the last hundred dollars or something. It's like, hey, you know, what are you doing with that old rod no more? Yo, it don't work. Well, how about that last hundred dollars? You just trade me that rod more. I got 15 of those. And I don't have time to mess with them. But uh, so, yeah, my that would be my dream uh, is to be able to help uh, people in a house or a mobile home fix their home and maybe do a video of that, you know. Not for my fame, but, you know, to share with people what, what we should be doing for one another. I'm just not wealthy enough to do that. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Yeah. We can dream. Anyway, guys, see you next Saturday. If you got any questions, save them up and uh, maybe even put them out there for me to discuss things you need me to discuss. Uh, it, I'll put a post up. I forgot to do it last week, but I'll put a post up tomorrow. So, so you guys can drop comments and questions there. All right, guys. Wish you all the best. And remember, you're Americans, not Americans. See ya.